Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual because I was lucky enough to be able to test out something I've been wanting to try for a long time and I thought I would just share it with you because it might be of interest to you as well. So what I'm talking about is basically using a laser cutter slash engraver for jewelry making. So I've been wanting to try this for a bit over a year and I was lucky enough for Xtool to reach out to me and ask if I wanted to try out their laser. So of course I jumped at that and said yes. So what we're going to be doing today is unboxing it, putting it together and then of course testing it out a little bit. Now if you're interested in checking out this machine for yourself of course I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below and it just so happens that they're actually running a Halloween sale so you can make some great savings. All the info about that will be in the description box as well. So of course I've looked into it a little bit prior to it arriving but I'll be honest I was very shocked when this arrived at my door because for some reason I had it in my head that it wouldn't be that big as in maybe not much bigger than A4 or something like that but the box itself was huge and when we put the machine together as well, it turns out the machine itself is pretty huge too. Which is obviously a plus because that means you can do so many more things than I imagined that you could with this machine. And also the colour of this machine is absolutely beautiful. So it's not an eyesore at all to have out. I will be honest, I'm a sucker for anodized aluminium and this is a very beautiful red colour. Now one reason that I've been wanting to try this for a long time but haven't taken the leap is that I've also been kind of intimidated by the whole thing. Which I still was going into this. So both the machine itself, the software, and then obviously the actual lasering part as well. But honestly, setting this whole thing up and trying to use it, it was actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. So that is a very pleasant surprise. But yeah, first of all, of course we needed to unbox it all and then start putting the machine together itself so we can actually use it. I'm not gonna show you any great detail on this because I am by no means an expert. Like I said, I've literally never done this before. I am just starting out with this myself. So a complete beginner. But I will say there were actually nice instructions in here as well, which made it easier. And just a little tip, if you were to get this machine for yourself, we actually found a video that was really helpful in putting the whole thing together. I'll of course put a link to that in the description box down below. And I really recommend that you check that out if you get one of these. So the machine that I got is the Xtool D1 Pro and it's the 20 watt version and it also came with some risers so you can lift the machine and put bigger things underneath that you can engrave into and also a rotary tool so you can for instance engrave into bottles which I'm also very excited to try out. So what was also really handy is along with the machine came a pack of different materials that you can basically experiment and try out the machine with. So I'm going to try out some of those things but then I also bought a couple of things myself because I have a few ideas what I want to try and use this for. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. So let's have a bit of a closer look at the things we ended up creating, shall we? So one of the things that came in the trial pack were a few pieces of this plywood here. This is three millimeter thick. So we thought we'd start with that as that was kind of the least intimidating. <laughs> So we started out trying to engrave something. So I got my logo out and I just want to mention as well, the software was surprisingly easy to use. Like I mentioned, that was another thing that quite intimidated me as in how it all worked and how difficult it was going to be. But it was actually a lot easier than I expected. So as you can see, we got my logo and then we just tried and engraved this into the plywood. And then after that, we cut a circle out around it. So it was basically a little piece here, almost a little coin with my logo on it. <laughs> And I just kind of thought my logo was actually a pretty good image to start with as well because it's pretty clean and simple in the design so it shouldn't be too much to be able to go wrong. And it did a really nice job. And as you can see in this, because this is wood, it kind of looks a bit burnt, which does happen. But there are a few things you can try and do to avoid that. But also, I would most likely want to paint anything I cut out or engrave into anything wood like this. So that part doesn't really bother me at all. So anyway, that was the first one. Then we tried to engrave my name logo, you could call it, and also cut that out with a rectangle around it because again pretty clean and simple design so we end up with almost a little name tag that I guess I could paint and then put it on my desk or something or even a sign to put on a wall would be pretty cool as well. Now we also then try to just take an image and get that engraved onto the wood so this is one of our babies so it's not the most clean or anything but we just kind of wanted to see what it could do and you can really see the image pretty much in the wood here so it did a really good job obviously we would kind of perfect it a bit more but this was just the first try so this is our little princess now once we played around with the wood a little bit in that pack of the testing materials they also supplied some metal business cards so just a little background story for quite a long time probably again a bit over a year or so i've been wanting to do new business cards and I discovered metal ones and when I saw them I was like I want those because they're really cool. Unfortunately they're also very expensive so I haven't really got around to doing that yet but in the pack came some blanks 
So we ended up trying to test that out because I thought, what if I could end up making my own? So that would save me a lot of money from having to buy them ready-made. You just need the blanks and then engrave onto them yourself. Now this went a little bit wrong. Again, we just tried my name logo there. So I'm guessing the settings were just a bit off because you can see kind of where the laser moves from side to side. It also engraved some of that. So you obviously you don't want that, but that's what we just need to experiment a bit more and play around with the settings. We tried on the other side and it did the same thing. So we just need to experiment a bit more with that. But they did supply a few of these cards, so we definitely can try that out a bit more. Now, after experimenting a bit with the materials that were sent along with the machine, I couldn't wait anymore. I had to try out some of the things that I bought myself because those were some of the ideas that I was playing around with to use this laser for, for jewelry making purposes. And I was really excited to see how that was gonna turn out. So I bought some blanks, basically. So first of all, I got these little round ones and they come with a hole in them already. Basically, the idea is to engrave into them. Now, I will be honest, when these arrived, they were a little bit smaller than I thought because apparently I hadn't checked the listing properly, but it's fine. They're still really cute, and again, it's really just for experimenting with. Now, they didn't really all work out super well, but we're gonna keep working on it and hopefully get it right. So I wanted to try and start out making some initials on the pennant basically because my idea was it's some cute simple blanks here and then maybe add initials and then you can obviously add them to a necklace and maybe add a little charm for a gemstone or a birthstone or something like that so this is just an N for Newt which is the princess you saw before <laughs> and the other side we tried too because what kind of kept happening with these round ones was that we couldn't get it centered properly, so we're not quite sure of why that is yet, but we're gonna obviously keep experimenting with that. These were the only ones where we couldn't quite get it centered properly, so we're gonna have to look into that, but it would just kind of keep putting it off to the side, and you can see, it could then perfectly put it to the other side when we tried a different method. So, that was the end. Then we tried a G for Gizmo, which is our other baby, and that also kept putting it to the side, so we have to just figure that problem out. But I just really like the idea of having these blanks and then adding something like, initials or dates or whatever it is or maybe star signs and then having that on a chain with a little gemstone maybe like a birthstone or something and that'll be just a lovely delicate little necklace so here we tried my logo again as well a few times on the same one also didn't quite work out and my logo again this was probably one of the best ones where it's more or less in the middle just a bit too high and then on the other side we tried an N again also almost in the middle just a bit too high so you can see we're slowly getting there but we're going to keep working on that so those were the round blanks that we tried out. Next, I'd also bought some rectangle blanks here. So I thought these were really cute as well. They came in a pack where they had multiple colors. So you get silver, gold, and copper, or rose gold, whatever you want to call it. And basically they are these long rectangles where they have a hole on either corner on one side, and then you can engrave something onto them. And you can, of course, attach a chain. So it'll hang like a lovely, delicate necklace where you have something personalized on it. So these are meant for stamping as well as the other ones, but I thought they would work maybe for the laser here. Now, this turned out to not work, and that is my fault because the round blanks here are stainless steel, which I knew when I bought them, which is what I was looking for. I bought these thing and they were also stainless steel, which they are not. It turns out they are brass. So the laser isn't really super capable of engraving into metal, except that it will do stainless steel like these. But like I said, these aren't stainless steel, they're brass. So this unfortunately didn't really work out. So I had these for no reason now. I'm sure they'll come in handy at some point for something. But the last thing I got were some bracelet blanks. So these are just kind of long metal pieces. These are also stainless steel which I thought all of them were, but anyway, that again you're supposed to stamp into, so with a hammer and stamps, and then afterwards you use a tool that also came with it to then shape them. So I got these thinking I could also engrave into them, which we did a few tests of those two, and those actually worked out pretty well. So first of all, we started out again just with my name logo, and you can see there, it's in the middle. It's a little bit too high, but again, that can easily be adjusted, but it's engraved nicely. So these are just straight. I haven't actually shaped these yet. And then we also did one with Gizmo and Newt, which are our two babies. And that was my thought with this laser for jewelry, with things like this, and just being able to personalize things in a different way and make it look exactly how you want to. That's what I was really excited about. And the last thing here is just like a generic font. It's nothing fancy design-wise, but this is the date of my husband's and I's wedding anniversary. And then we just put a hat on either side and try it out again. We centered it. Still a little bit too high, but again, that's something we can get used to and adjust. But then these, I just need to shape them to see what they actually are like. Finished. So let's just do that, shall we? So let's just get the tool in. Now, I haven't used this tool before, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just put one end on that little lip and then you shape it around, around a part here. 
until we get to the point where it starts to flatten out and then I'm just going to go in from the other side do the same thing so we get that rounded oval shape for the bracelet so obviously this is going to end up being a bangle or something a bit like that so these ends are sticking out a little bit I think I just want to try and bring them in a little bit more not too much but a bit see if I can just do that with a pair of pliers get a better grip so just sort of kind of bending inward slightly a bit like that that's better and there we go that's the finished bracelet so this is actually a really nice cuff. Like I said, this isn't the nicest one design wise or anything, but in principle, this could be really lovely. And then also they're nice and easy to take on and off because of cuffs and the ends are already ready. So nothing is sharp or hurting in any way. And like I said, you can literally make them like this where they're nice and personalized and sentimental, or you can make a lovely design going all the way around, which I've also thought about maybe making something braid looking or Celtic wise, almost as if a braid is running all the way along. That'd be really cool as well. Well, so let's just finish off the other ones as well. So this is then all of them done and I'm really liking how this is looking. Obviously the designs had to be improved but these are just test runs. But I really like the concept of having these bangles and engraving into them and it can be completely personalised. So I am very much looking forward to doing some more. Thankfully I've still got some blanks left. And this was literally just our first trial run after we set up the machine and then played around with it for a bit. So I think this is pretty good for a first go. There's a bit to improve on, of course. But like I mentioned, it was actually a lot easier and less intimidating than what I was expecting and worried about. <laughs> and since the first session of trying them out, my brain has basically been going with loads of ideas that I want to try. So of course, work more on blanks like this and then do more actual finished designs. But I've also started playing around with ideas of using the plywood here to make jewelry with, which is not something I expected but since cutting some of this out my thought has been going to kind of making different designs and cut them out paint them with whatever colors you want to and then you can also glue them together and basically have multiple layers so you can create really interesting pieces so I think I might want to try that next time we work with this machine and hopefully I might be able to show you some results with that in the next video for this tool here along with some more other metal blanks so that video will be posted in not very long so you won't have to wait too long to see some of those results hopefully there'll be some actual nice results but either way I'm personally really looking forward to playing around with this machine a lot more so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe to my channel this is not my usual content. Most of the time I make tutorials for jewelry with wire, macrame, kumihimo, lots of different mediums. But this is something new that I've been wanting to try out and now thankfully I've been able to. And if you want to, you can then join me on that journey. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.